Vita Carnies is an analog horror series that has recently gained considerable popularity within the internet horror sphere, and for good reason. It is arguably one of the best and most unique attempts to create a horror universe online that we've seen in the past few years. I've already talked about the series on my channel before, and if you haven't seen that video, you should definitely check it out. I narrowly missed including two of the more recent entries in that video, though they wouldn't have changed how I thought about the series very much. The season finale, however, I can't really say the same about. So strap in as I talk about the two episodes I missed, the season finale, and the implications that I think it has for the future of the story. Now, if you've gotten this far, and you haven't watched the series on your own yet, I'd highly suggest that you do so. If you're a little baby, and can't watch scary spooky stuff on your own, or you just don't have time to or don't feel like it, that's fine. I'll give you all a summarized recap of my interpretation of events before the finale. Now's your time to pause and go watch if you want. In the year 1931, a strange new type of organism appeared seemingly overnight. Due to it being made mostly of flesh and muscle, it was bestowed with the scientific name Vita carnis, Latin for living meat. The seven Vita carnis species very rapidly spread across the globe. These seven were the crawl, a plant-like organism that greatly benefited the ecosystem around it. The trimmings, nuisances that seemingly did little but make for unusual pets. The meat snake, a giant snake-like being that, although harmless, would have recycled the skulls of its victims as its own. The mimic, an intelligent hunter who would stalk and prey on humans in their own bedrooms. The harvester, a living bear trap that lives in dense forests that has a 100% fatality rate to its venom. The host, a being that emitted spores capable of brainwashing humans into becoming its next meal. The monoliths, Mysterious guardians that live only on an island of redacted location and origin that doesn't even exist in our world. And finally, an extra eighth anomaly, the Singularity, a roughly basketball-sized floating black orb whose properties were least understood. These various species' relationships with humanity ranged from convenient to benign to incomprehensibly dangerous were originally introduced to all of this basic information about the world in the form of a research documentary. The rest of the episodes could vary between cooking shows or police footage of innocent deaths by the hand of a mimic. Littered throughout the episodes are hints and clues of two stories happening right under our noses, the tale of the prince and the tale of Vincent Barrere. The prince's tale is told in the form of distorted storybook pages that tell a story of a prince separated from his mother and father on a journey across a sea. He washes up on an island and uses his kingdom's magic to put himself into a deep healing sleep, and the world changes dramatically over long periods of time around him as this happens. He gets found by a species of critters who assist his healing sleep by feeding him what little food they have and allow him to wake up early. He befriends them and agrees to help save them and their home the forest, and sets out on a journey, vowing to return with his kingdom. Vincent's tale is just a little less in your face than the storybook. We see that he's wanted by the Canadian government in the cooking show episode, and we learn that his father was killed by a mimic when he was only a child. Cult activity related to the Vita Carnies is referenced multiple times, and the government seems surprisingly negligent in thwarting the threat that the Vita Carnies poses on humanity. Many of the episodes we see are in the form of VHS tapes, and sometimes we see or hear references to someone taking notes or making archives of certain information. We know that there is someone trying to uncover the dark secrets the Vita Carnies have to offer. In my first video, I theorized that the entire series was taking place from the perspective of the Vincent Barrere I just mentioned, wanted by a corrupt government for sticking his nose where they deemed it didn't belong, because of their involvement in the cover-up of his father's murder. But to what extent does this cult permeate the society at large in the world of Vita Carnis? Well, that leads us into our first video, Uncovered Documents. By a rather unfortunate circumstance, uncovered documents had actually already existed when I put out my previous video, but I just kind of missed it. 
It's actually the shortest episode so far, serving to clarify some theories that Flavor Enhancer naturally brought up. It begins with a black screen, and then cuts between footage of an ant colony and visuals of the Flavor Enhancer Deluxe which was advertised to us previously. New Flavor Enhancer Deluxe, newly rebranded product from New Trier Co. is an instant hit with record sales. After that we see the same digital log from Mimic Defense Instructional Tape and Species Anomaly Report. Confidential info, files confiscated or not released to the public. Another newspaper clipping. Nutrier Scandal. Nutrier Co. is facing charges after numerous reports of sickness after consumption of their product. The Flavor Enhancer. The only statements made from the company so far are dismissing any issues and that their product is safe to consume. The video then highlights the logo on the container for the Flavor Enhancer, which is the red triangle that represents the prince. We've seen it before, more than once. However, this episode shows us just how bad things really are. The logo is an emblem, a symbol, a symbol for the cult. The following footage is intercut with a showcasing of the cordyceps fungus taking over the brain functions of an ant and climbing to the highest spot to release its spores and infect another unsuspecting victim. Sound like anybody we know? The host of influence. This all but confirms that the flavor enhancer is simply re-engineered host spores, and that it's being used to enslave the general public en masse and convince them of some things that simply aren't true. Funnily enough, this detail was right in our face the whole time, and I missed it, because the cook in the original episode showing off the flavor enhancer can briefly be seen wearing a gas mask. The reason why nothing is being done, despite at least some public outcry, is because the spread of the cult is already far too wide. It's been decades, they permeate the government already, at least the Canadian government. The video finally ends on another newspaper clipping, this time teaching us about a new private organization called the Containment and Research Consult Association Society, or CARCAS for short. Apparently they've been experiencing backlash from government agencies related to violations of newly introduced policies. Sounds like someone we can trust. Someone our protagonist can trust. He starts a new log, titled Message to Carcass, which leads us into the next episode. Message opens up with a date. December 30th, 1990. This is the farthest date we have on the series timeline so far. Then a monolith documentary. In the distant horizon, the group of monoliths stand vacant. Although closed off to outsiders, their stands can be observed well outside the perimeter. Except, not really. inconsistencies in mimic defense procedure, the inconsistency in the figures related to the largest meat snake. The documentary, even, was just a fun, casual project from a group of college students, but they were arrested for making it. Some of them are still on the run. Everything that has happened in the shadows of this narrative was for a reason. We see the tapes that we've been watching the whole time, this time in physical form, all delivered in a secret package to Carcass, from our protagonist, this messenger. Every continuity, every piece of evidence, no matter how small, is all leading to the island. The cult is planning something too, not just the Vita Carnes itself. This really is a doomsday scenario. The messenger is only one person, a highly wanted person at that. He doesn't possibly have the ability to do anything about this, even with the information he's gathered. The video then cuts back to the monolith documentary. The monoliths are truly an astonishing sight to behold. As if nothing strange ever happened, it then fades to black. 
and where we normally would have gotten our new storybook page to analyze at the end of the video, it's literally ripped right from our grasp. Vita Carnies actually has a very particular format to the way that its episodes are uploaded that is very easy to overlook. The first seven entries in the series talk about each of the Vita Carnies in increasing order of rarity. The compiled documentary then goes on to do the same thing, but adds the singularity at the end who did not receive its own video. This much is obvious. However, did you notice that every video after the documentary does the same exact thing? Cheese Crawl Penne is a video focusing on the crawl. Guide to Owning a Pet Trimming focuses on the trimming. Meat Snake Specimen, Mimic Defense Instructional Tape, Species Anomaly Report, Flavor Enhancer Commercial, and Message, which included new information about the monoliths, even if it wasn't the main focus. Every single episode after the documentary is themed after one of them in the same order in which they were originally discussed. After Message, this only leaves room for one more. The Singularity. In the season finale, we cut forward by an unknown quantity of time. The episode is called Facility Zero, and we're briefed on the plan of military action that Carcass is about to put in place. Mission Brief. Three ground teams are tasked with infiltrating a previously abandoned mall titled Facility Zero, which is located in the restricted zone based on our info. The mission will take place in three stages, infiltration, encirclement, and ambush. Here, we see documents that finally clarify facts related to singularities. That's right, singularities, plural. Several spheres composed of an unidentifiable material have been located in various locations on multiple continents. Each found thus far have been located via strange signatures being emitted by the orbs being caught on various devices. As of the time this document is written, four singularities have been acquired. Three more signatures have been located and are currently being investigated. Descriptions referred to on document number 001.1. Instructions are currently as follows. Remain on standby until all singularities have been obtained. Once all entities have been apprehended and contained at Facility Zero, begin Stage 2 of the program. Refer to document number 009, New Trier, for basic briefing. From there, we get to see teams Alpha, Beta, and Gamma get into position to infiltrate, targeting a harvester in their path. We now understand why the harvesters were all slowly moving towards the island. They essentially act as a minefield surrounding the facility. Funnily enough, it seems a well-placed shot into the bulb is all that's required to take one down, since rupturing the venom sac inside the bulb just makes them kind of self-destruct really reframes the authorities refuse to handle harvester newspaper quote. They infiltrate the perimeter and make their way past a monolith, who doesn't seem to be at all wise to the fact that they're even there. In position, awaiting green light. After encircling the building, they infiltrate. We see footage of guards being taken out, and finally they arrive at a door. We are experiencing mechanical interference. Should we resume? Copy, phase three is still a go. Preparing for breach. They make a pause due to mechanical interference, which if you know anything about the singularities, foreshadows what's about to happen. Get down! Get down! Put your hands up! Put your hands up! Get down! Get down! 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 Get down! Get down! We hear screaming, instructions to get down, but the military personnel open fire, and suddenly, it's over. Except it's not, actually, uh, because this video has a hidden link that leads to a new, unlisted video. This video, titled One Out of Three, compiles the entire storybook that we've seen so far into one video in a way that is easier to consume. 
Disturbing audio plays in the background, and as far as I know, no major changes have been made to any of the pages relative to what we're already familiar with. The really interesting part is when we go past page 13 to see a mostly ripped but entirely new page. This is likely the ripped page that we saw in Message. It depicts the prince, who seems to have successfully made his way back home and is presenting himself to his king in the throne room. The Vita Carni's banner flies overhead, and the text, although broken, seems to read, One day, while the king, at long last the prince, a new land in which, and now their king, and that's all we can really read. Based on this, though, it seems obvious that the prince who left the island in page 13 has managed to return home and inform the king of what he found, a new land. And I think they plan on returning. Now I'm going to try to do some basic analysis of all of the things that we've learned. Originally, I theorized that the prince's tale was a metaphor for the singularity, the kingdom being his army, the Vita Carnis, and the journey out from the island being an event that is yet to happen. However, for obvious reasons, I don't think the portion related to the singularity I originally theorized makes any sense anymore. For one thing, there are seven singularities and only one prince. It can't be that the Singularities represent members of the royal family because there's only three of them. On top of that, the detailed painting of the Singularity that Darien posted shows that the Singularities actually look exactly like the logo that represents the Vita Carnis as a whole, which we see used in the Prince's flag and the banner in the throne room, along with the new Triarco logo. There's also a voice actor who was credited with the role Eyes in the final episode, and I have no idea what that could possibly mean either. Aside from potentially having a connection to the eye we see in the visual display throughout the episode. In Message, we see that the students who created the documentary are being actively tracked down for the creation of it, some having been arrested whilst others are still on the run from the government. Highlighted are the words sensitive material. If you remember, reproduction of sensitive material and interprovincial travel are the listed reasons for Vincent Barrere being wanted by the government, along with his photo being taken the year after the documentary was made. I think there is evidence to suggest that Vincent may have actually been a part of the team of researchers who made the documentary. However, the newspaper clipping says that the group of students claimed ignorance to the extra information that they got in trouble for. So. Vincent is either blatantly lying, or our messenger is a different person entirely. Personally, since we know so much information about Vincent, I would like to believe he is our protagonist and that the messenger isn't just a random person who we've yet to identify, but it is a possibility I'm willing to accept if it comes to that. We also learned in the document at the beginning of Facility Zero that there are seven singularities. This document seems to be the cult's plans that the messenger said he would be giving to Carcass. The document is labeled as Number 001, and it says that Phase 2 would happen after all seven singularities were gathered and the briefing for the plans are in Document Number 009, New Trier. Because Facility Zero is named in these plans, I believe it's what allowed Carcass to locate the facility in the first place, on top of the already obvious evidence of the island in the Hudson being suspicious. Now, I want to talk about a theme that I've noticed after I watched the season finale. Something that I think might be important in the future. There are seven Carnus creatures, seven singularities, seven skulls in the largest meat snake, even the storybook has a repeated page seven. For some reason, the number seven and the act of seven figures being arranged in this particular circular order is important. Though we sorely lack information, if I had to come up with a theory based on the finale, I'd say that the singularities were created by the prince's magic, and that each of them has some kind of correlation to the seven different types of carnies, which is why they can be seen in a similar formation. As for the reason why this ritual was so important, I theorize it could be a ritual that would allow the prince to return to Earth as he said he would. Assuming the descendants of the Critters are the modern cultists, nothing would be more important to them than the safe return of the prince, but unfortunately this is entirely raw speculation. Overall, the season finale has raised far more questions than answers. 
I might not have answers to those questions, but I do have answers to a lot of other Vita Carnies questions, because I have a separate interview with Darian up on my second channel. The last one of the user submitted from Rigby is... Bro, what were you on? <laughs> That's the scary thing. I'm completely sober. If you're interested in that, the link will be in the description. Hopefully you all enjoyed the video and are excited for Season 2 of Vita Carnies. If you had a good time, it would mean the world if you subscribed for more content like this and turned on notifications you never miss a video. If you want to support me further, you can donate $5 a month to my Ko-fi to get access to videos in advance and you can also follow my socials and join my community Discord server. That being said, that's going to be all from me. I hope you enjoyed the video. Until next time.